Hi, how's it going? My name is Sebastian, and today we're gonna make this. A garage door opener. If you are using some kind of smart system like Home Assistant, Domotic, OpenHub, or basically any open system, you can easily integrate it with this opener. So if you wanna turn your ordinary and boring door into a smart one, this movie is for you. Keep watching. Although I wish I could say I came up with this project completely by myself, I did not. There's an unbelievably, unbelievably, unbelie Son of a biscuit eater! There's a very cool maker on YouTube called Dr. Ziz. Him. And he's super into making DIY projects for smart homes. If you don't know him yet, go check out his channel. There's a link in the description. Anyway. One of his movies about similar opener inspired me to do this project. However, I wouldn't be myself if I hadn't designed custom PCB or enclosure for this. I like when my device is small, neat, and it has plenty of features. But before we start, let's talk about basics. This is perfect time for a whiteboard. First and foremost, we need a brain. And by we, I mean our door opener, of course. I decided to choose a SPA266 model. For less than $2, we can have fully functional microcontroller with full TCP IP stack. It can control the device and be connected to the Wi-Fi at the same time. It is perfect solution for IoT application like this. More about this chip I wrote on my website. I put link in the description. Relay. It is a great way to simulate the momentary AKA doorbell switch. The vast majority of the gauge driver have a special connector located outside of the casing. Shorting the appropriate pins gives a signal to close or open the gate. We can do it locally by pressing the switch on the wall or remotely using a relay and a SP chip. Since you are watching this, I don't have to tell you why the second method is much cooler. Magnetic read sensors. Unfortunately, the same connector is used for opening and closing. It means that we don't really know the current position of the door. If it's closed, shorting the pins will open it, and vice versa. That's why we need some feedback. In other words, we need read sensors. It has two parts, sensor itself and the magnet. When the magnet is near to the sensor, the circuit is closed. When we remove it, the circuit will open. In this project, we will use two of them, to detect when the gate is fully open and fully closed. Ultrasonic sensor has a car presence detector. Now, how on earth am I gonna use an ultrasonic sensor to check if car is in place? I'm glad you asked. I have this car model here, totally by accident. Not really. And it will help me to demonstrate how the sensor is supposed to work. Here is the side view of a garage, and here will be placed our device facing down. So if the garage is empty, the sensor measures distance all the way to the floor. Let's say two and a half meters, or 100 inches for the people from the US. But when I drive my car into the garage, the sensor measures only about one meter, or 40 inches. In this way, we can easily determine the car's presence. Just check the distance and everything will be clear. Temperature and humidity sensor. I don't think I need to explain much here. You will surely find out plenty of reasons why it's nice to have such a sensor in your garage. One example I have in mind right now is a controlling radiator. And last but not least, light intensity sensor. It's a sensor from the category, why not? The cheap ASP8266 has an IDC, analog to digital converter. So we can connect an analog component like this light sensor. Okay, now we have everything we need. Now it's time to design our custom PCB. Let's go.
A few things you should pay attention to if you plan to do something similar on your own. HCS R04 sensor requires 5 volts. You can connect it directly to SP module, especially the echo pin, which is the output from the sensor. The easiest way to make a safe connection is a voltage divider. I used 1.5 and, and 2K resistors. This way we will lower the voltage to a safe level. Pin trick you can connect directly, because 3.3 volts is sufficient for the sensor to correctly read all the commands from the ASP. I also use a similar voltage divider for an analog light sensor. The values of the resistors should be selected depending on the photoresistor model and the expected amount of light. The rest of the schematic is pretty obvious, but if you have any question, feel free to ask in the comment section. Our device is almost ready. The case is still missing, but we will make it in the moment. Now let's take advantage of the fact that the all programming pins are exposed and integrated with a smart system. My system of choice is a home assistant and SP home firmware for the chip itself. However, if you are using something else, I'm sure that the ASP module can be integrated with it without any problems. I won't describe entire procedure here because I don't want to bore you to death. I have described everything in detail on my website. Link, as always, in the description. You can also download all the files there, including schematic, PCB layout and 3D model of the case. If you want me to make a separate video about integration home assistant and garage opener, let me know in the comment. Here in the nutshell. Start by adding a new device in ASP Home. Generate a binary file. Connect the USB UART adapter to the device. Flash it using for example ASP Easy. Finally, create a new entity to control the smart garage door opener. From now on, we can make any modification in the config file over the air. The USB UART adapter was needed only once. Ok, it's time to design a case and assembly the device in the garage. As you can see, I mounted the device and voltage sensors on the middle rail. This is perfect place because it is directly above a parked car. The wiring is very simple. Starting from the left we have power supply, relay, first and the second read sensor. And that's basically it. Let's check if it works. I hope you enjoyed this movie, if so, hit a like and subscribe button, because more projects like this, coming up.